On day one, I spawned in into the Badlands as a shapeshifter. Whoa, that's a cool special ability. I wonder how far I can go with it. But I didn't have long to think about that because a gang of wither skeletons with bows and swords showed up and started chasing me. Darn it, I wish I could go faster, but I'm only a baby shapeshifter and that means I've only got three hearts. But even though I was weak, that didn't mean I couldn't shapeshift. I hid behind a rock and turned into a rabbit. Nobody ever suspects a rabbit. The wither skeletons kept searching until they found my little rabbit self, acting casually. The leader of the wither skeletons immediately clocked me. There he is, boys. Grab him. The wither skeletons immediately surrounded me, giving me no chance to escape. Uh -oh. Wait, how did you know it was me? There are no rabbits in the Badlands. You've still got a lot to learn, shapeshifter. Let's take him to the jail. On day two, the wither skeletons dragged me over to the Badlands jail. You can't do this. I'm too young to go to jail. But that didn't seem to persuade them. They threw me in a cell with another prisoner, a quill beast. I had to figure out what was going on. Hey, Mr. Quill Beast, I'm Zozo. What's your name and what are you in for? The name's Quilliam. I don't know why I'm here. I was just wandering the Badlands when suddenly the Wither Skeletons arrested me and dragged me here. Don't worry, Quilliam. I have an idea for how we can both escape. No offense, Zozo, but I really don't know how a rabbit could launch a jailbreak. That's the thing. I'm not a rabbit. I'm a shapeshifter. I used my power to turn into a wither skeleton, just like the ones who ran the Badlands prison. We used one of Quilliam's quills to pick the lock, and the two of us walked down the hall together. Another wither skeleton stopped us on the way. Hey, where are you two going? I'm just taking this prisoner to a different cell block. Nothing to see here. Mm, fine, I suppose. On your way. In my wither skeleton disguise, Quilliam and I slipped out of the Badlands prison without a second thought. That was amazing, Zozo. You saved both of us in there. These shapeshifting skills really come in handy. I can't wait to get better at them. On day three, I decided to continue my escape and make my way into the jungle. It'd be way harder for the bad guys to find me amongst all these dense trees. But if I really want to fit in here, I can't just be a wither skeleton. I need a real jungle disguise. That's why I shapeshifted into an orangutan. Orangutan is Malay for person of the forest, so it makes for a perfect jungle disguise. All this shapeshifting was hungry work, so I explored the forest and gathered up some tasty melons to eat. Mmm, delicious and nutritious. But while foraging, I encountered a mysterious wooden villager meditating in a clearing. Sorry to interrupt you, wooden villager, but is everything okay? Everything is more than okay now that you're here, Zozo. What? How did you know my name? I know many things. I am Ama, the jungle mystic. I have long traveled this jungle in search of a hero to whom I can reveal the great truth of the world. Do you believe you are that hero? Well, I'd like to be, for sure. Good, then follow me. There is much to learn. On days four to five, Ama, the jungle mystic, led me deeper into the forest where he started to explain what was going on here. So does the problem here have to do something with the wither skeletons? No, the wither skeletons are irrelevant to the true issue here, Zozo. You see, this forest is overrun with vicious tribal gremlins. Alone, they may not look like much, but together, they can pose a major threat. For the sake of the world's peace and safety, we must see to it that they are defeated. We have less than 100 days to exterminate them before things really get out of hand. Wow, that sounds like a tall order. These tribal gremlins must be really scary. How should I fight them? Don't worry about fighting them just yet. I'll be able to help you plan the best course of action. For now, take these tools and start building yourself a base. Ama the Jungle Mystic gave me a set of stone tools, and I left him to go find a clearing in the jungle where I could start building my base. I immediately started cutting down trees for wood and mining for stone. My base was already coming along nicely when suddenly a wither skeleton scouting party appeared out of the woods. He's gotta be around here somewhere. Come on, boys, let's find this slippery little crate. I needed to think fast. Obviously, a rabbit was no good, and they'd probably be expecting another wither skeleton. What could I turn into that would save me? Oh wait, I've got it. I shapeshifted into a wither boss and floated over to the wither skeletons. What are you boys doing out here slacking off? This is unacceptable. 
But boss, somebody escaped to prison. We need to go track them down. Forget about one lousy prisoner. Go back and stand guard to make sure more don't get out. And that's an order. Yes, with the boss, sir. The wither skeletons turned tail and marched out of the forest. I breathed a sigh of relief and my shape-shifting skills paid off because I earned enough XP to level up. Whoa, I have six hearts now and I can shift for longer. This is awesome. On day six to day eight, I took the form of a baboon so I could finish building the house and it looked amazing. I decided to explore for a bit. As I was walking through the jungle, I noticed something a little strange. Wait, where are all the animals? Is this something to do with the tribal gremlins that Amma the Jungle Mystic was telling me about? As I was gathering some coal, a stray ran past me. Whoa there, everything okay, stray? There's no time to talk. I need to keep running. Get out of my way. You're safe here. Explain yourself. My town was destroyed by the Red Nightmare and his forces. He's taking over everything. If you had any brains in that baboon head of yours, you'd run while you still can. And then he ran off, leaving me confused. Red Nightmare? I'd never heard of that. So I decided to find Amma the Jungle Mystic again and ask him what he knew. Ah yes, the Red Nightmare. He's another terrible force associated with those tribal gremlins I told you about. Perhaps it's time to arm yourself against the coming struggles. If you make your way to the snowy tundras and find the Frost Weaver, you'll be able to obtain a mace by defeating it. Go now, the tribal gremlin threat advances ever closer. On days 9 to 10, I shifted into a snow leopard so I could both move faster and stand the cold. Then I made my way out to the snowy tundra to begin my search. I'm gonna find you, Frost Weaver! But what I didn't expect was that the Frost Weaver would find me first. It was huge and ferocious, and it attacked me as soon as it saw me. He spit poison webs at me, which really slowed me down. I figure I can't ask you nicely to hand over the mace then. The Frost Weaver didn't feel like chatting with me. Instead, it relentlessly attacked, knocking off a couple of my hearts. There was no way I could defeat a monster this powerful. But to my luck, I suddenly saw a snow golem running towards me. Golems have a natural protection instinct, so I was really in luck here. Don't worry, kid. I'll give you a hand. The snow golem joined me in the fight, and we were able to turn the tide. Soon, the Frost Weaver was defeated, and I had picked up the special mace he dropped. Thanks for helping me there, snow golem. I really owe you one. Think nothing of it. Why don't you come back to my cave with me? My family and I could make you some dinner. So we traveled back to the ice cave where the snow golem and his family, some baby snow golems, lived. He gave me some mushroom stew that helped replenish my missing hearts. I suppose you're out here fleeing from the Red Nightmare. That's why most people come to brave these frosty wastes. The Red Nightmare? As in the tribal gremlins? Tribal gremlins? I've never heard of any such thing. How strange. Well, I better go ask Ama about it. Thanks for the stew. On days 11 to 12, I assumed the form of a formidable Komodo dragon and returned to my base. Ama, the jungle mystic, was waiting for me. Ama, something isn't right. I got the mace, but while I was out in the snowy tundra, I met a snow golem who knew about the red nightmare, but not the tribal gremlins. How could that be? I wouldn't worry about it, Zozo. Instead, go to this cave I've marked out on your map. You can mine some iron ore there and perhaps use it to upgrade your armor or gear. It will be vital in the coming struggles. Once you have your iron, you can begin the attack on the tribal gremlin camp to the left of here. Okay, if you say so, Ama. Still, it's a little weird to say the least. I went to the cave that Ama marked out for me. I made my way in and started mining the iron ore. There was a decent amount of it down there, but not enough to do what I really needed. I did grab the extra coal that was there though. Then, when I left the cave, I was ambushed by a lurker, one of the nastiest little creatures in the jungle. Thank goodness I have my mace with me. With one swing of my mace, I'd smushed that nasty creature and was off on my way to the tribal gremlin camp. From day 13 to day 15, I came across a path. This must be the way to the village. I took the form of a gremlin so nobody would really notice me and I followed the path. I arrived at the tribal gremlin camp. It was basically a huge village made of tree houses in the jungle. I was expecting it to be scary, but honestly, all the tribal gremlins seemed weirdly peaceful. I decided to talk to one of them to see what was going on. Hey, uh, fellow gremlin, you looking forward to causing some more chaos in the forest today? He just looked confused. Chaos, what are you talking about? I turned and saw a very chubby, stern looking tribal gremlin chief sitting behind me. There will be no chaos around here, boy. 
We need to stay organized if we want to have any hope of defeating the Red Nightmare. The tribal gremlins wanted to fight the Red Nightmare too? I thought they were in league with them. Nothing was making sense. I needed to go back to my base and talk to Ama the Jungle Mystic immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base. I took the long way back through the jungle, trying to figure out some kind of reasonable explanation for what had happened. Could Ama had been lying to me this whole time? But why? When I arrived back at my base, there was a tribal gremlin waiting for me. He looked like he was in a panic. Stranger, we need your help. Something terrible has been attacking our village. Something terrible? I'll come right away. But by the time I arrived at the village, it looked like the worst had already happened. The village was in ruins. The tribal gremlin chief was dead. Only his mask remained. And standing in the middle of it all was Ama. Ama, how could you? The tribal gremlins are friendly and peaceful. To you, perhaps, but to my plans, they were a frustrating inconvenience. What do you mean, your plans? I never told you my full name, did I? I'm a shapeshifter like you, you see. Some call me Ama, but my true name is Amogolish, perhaps better known as... Suddenly, Ama shapeshifted into a huge, blood-red creature, the true Amogolish. Wait, you're the Red Nightmare? Very clever, Zozo. I thought I could trick you into destroying the tribal gremlins for me, but it seems you're completely useless. So you can be destroyed with them. I was so angry that I turned into a huge vile ogre and charged at Amogolish, the Red Nightmare. He would never use me to do evil. But I underestimated how strong he was. With one strike, he knocked me down from the bridge and everything faded to black. From day 20 to day 22, I woke at the bottom of what remained of the destroyed tribal gremlin village. I'd failed. I'd let them all down. But thankfully, at least some of them had survived Amogolish's monstrous attack. But now we have no place to live. We can't just survive out here in the jungle. He'll pick us off one by one. That's when I turned into a horse. Nobody is living out in the jungle. Hop on my back, and I'll let you come live at my base. We can work together and stop Amogolish from destroying anywhere else. One by one, I took all the remaining tribal gremlins back to my base and started building a barracks for them. If Amogolish thinks he can destroy us all, we're not gonna go down without a fight. From day 23 to day 26, I traveled out to the desert. That jungle humidity can be killer sometimes. I decided to turn myself into a roadrunner so I could run extra fast across the sand. Meep meep. It feels good to feel the wind blow between my feathers. But I had to stop when I saw a sun god being attacked by a gang of enhanced aeropedes. They must have been sent by Amalgalish. Don't worry, sun god. I'm here to help. I ran in and started circling around the aeropedes, distracting them from attacking the sun god. That gave the sun god a chance. I unleashed the power of the sun. He sent out a powerful sunblast, hitting and vaporizing the aeropedes. And he never could have done it without me. I never could have done it without you, Zozo. In exchange, I give you the blessing of the sun. From now on, you will be stronger and faster in daylight. You will also gain a few hearts. That's such a cool power. Thank you, Sun God. And the two extra hearts will come in handy. May my blessings be with you. From day 27 to day 31, I went back to the jungle. I missed all those lush green trees. On the way back to the base, I found some sheep wandering around the jungle. They seemed lost, so I decided to take a stone guard form and shepherd them back to my base. When they were back, I started to build a pen for them. Now I can have as much wool as I want. This is perfect. I also decided to make a bigger wall around my base to protect me, the sheep, and my tribal gremlin guest from Amogolish and his minions. Meanwhile, in Amogolish's evil lair, he was meeting with his deadliest warrior, the behemoth, a huge demon knight. What would you have me do, master? I thought this Zozo could be useful, but it seems he's just a thorn in our sides. If we are to dominate this world, he and those who ally with him must be destroyed. Make it so. Yes, my master. I will destroy him personally. From day 32 to day 35, I decided I'd wander the plains in search of new allies and weapons. I needed to figure out how to defeat Amogolish. Because I didn't want to get attacked by any monsters on my journey, I decided to shift into a mutant skeleton. Nobody would mess with that. Stop right there, monster. 
I turned and saw a gang of armed villagers ready to fight. They started firing arrows and I was forced to dodge as fast as I could. Wait, stop! I'm not a monster, I'm Zozo. I'm just a shapeshifter. That got the villagers to calm down. They lowered their weapons and began to murmur amongst themselves before turning back to me. Come with us, Zozo. We wanna take you to our leader, the great King Midas, the ruler of gold. They led me back to their village where Midas was waiting for me in a golden throne in the middle of the village. He was certainly an impressive sight. Ah, so my men brought you to me. There must be a reason. Why are you here, my boy? I'm trying to find a way to slay a Mogolish and get revenge for the tribal gremlins. Correct answer. Amalgalish, the Red Nightmare, has troubled our kingdom for generations. Me and my ancestors have tried to gather information about him for years, and I believe soon we will have the answers. When that time comes, come back to me. From day 36 to day 39, I turned myself into a scarecrow, just for fun, and entered the mine in the village. I mined iron to complete my new set of tools and armor. And I got really lucky, cause it wasn't just iron ore I found, I also found some diamonds. Not enough to craft just yet, but they were definitely worth keeping in my inventory for a rainy day. Though the most exciting thing I found down in that mine shaft was a dusty old book containing an unbreakable enchantment, which would make my new items unbreakable. I crafted a full set of iron tools, iron weapons, and iron armor before returning back to my base to rest. But sadly, there would be no rest. When I got back to my base, an Aztec warrior was already there, waiting for me. King Midas sent me to collect you. He wishes to speak to you about a truly grave matter. Then I suppose I better come along. From day 40 to day 43, I returned to the village to meet with King Midas. I wondered what had gotten him so worried, aside from the fact that I'd now shapeshifted into a gorilla for toughness. Zozo, I'm glad you're safe. Of course, your highness. Why wouldn't I be safe? My spies have gotten word of a terrible development in the war against Amalgalish. He has summoned his most dangerous minion, the Great Behemoth, and he has given him the instruction to destroy you personally. Don't worry, King Midas. I've gotten a lot tougher than I used to be. I bet I could kick this behemoth guy's booty. Why don't you say that to my face, weakling? I turned and saw the behemoth was standing right behind me while the villagers fled in every direction. He was even bigger and tougher than I'd imagined. I charged up towards him and used all my gorilla strength to deliver a mighty punch. But the behemoth just shrugged it off. He hit me back and sent me skidding across the village square. Take this new form, my boy, the gold golem, and use it in my name. With my new gold golem strength, I pulled out my mace and attacked the behemoth. Somehow, he effortlessly blocked every hit and started rampaging around the village. I need to get out of here. I'm still not strong enough to beat even the henchmen yet. So, I fled the village while the villagers tried desperately to stop Behemoth. From day 44 to day 49, I returned to my base, feeling so ashamed of myself for running away that I turned myself into a blobfish. I don't deserve to call myself a hero. I left all those poor villagers to fend for themselves. I'm a zero. As I was moping, none other than King Midas turned up, having survived the previous battle. Zozo, I need to call on you yet again. I don't deserve you, King Midas. I was a coward. I ran away. Don't focus on the past, Zozo. We're not going there. I'm here because I have some important knowledge. There are legends of a sacred item, a mithril battle axe, that can be used to defeat the Red Nightmare. A mithril battle axe? But I already have a sword and a mace, and neither of them help. The Mithril Battle Axe is more than just a weapon, Zozo. It's supernatural. It can give its users immense power, even granting them wishes. But it is legendarily hard to obtain. You will either need to find one or make one from Mithril Ore. The mountains would be the best place to begin your search. From day 50 to day 53, I decided to take the form of a mountain troll and go searching through the mountains for information on the mithril hammer. Maybe if I find it, I can regain my honor after running away from Behemoth. The way up the mountain was tough. At the top, I searched and searched until I found a secret cave tucked away under one of the mountains. 
It seemed like the kind of place where something important might be hiding away. I put up some torches to light my way inside of the cave, but sadly I didn't find any mithril or a mithril battle axe in there. But I did find a book, labeled The Legend of a Mogulish. Hey, that's the guy I'm fighting. The book described how a Mogulish is an ancient evil who has tried to take over the world many times. But only someone who is of pure heart with a perfect weapon will be able to put him down for good and save everyone. Maybe I do have a shot after all. With at least some extra knowledge, I started heading back to my base. The way down was just as treacherous as the way up, but I eventually made it. When I reached the jungle again, I heard some commotion and I saw a Clink fighting a whole gang of scary jungle spiders. Don't worry, Clink, I'll help you. But by the time I reached him, he'd already defeated all the jungle spiders without breaking a sweat. He was clearly a lot stronger than I was. That was amazing, Mr. Clink. Wanna come back to my base? I need someone to help train me how to fight like you. Sorry, buddy, but I'm not the teaching type. Old Clink is too free-spirited to ever be tied down like that. Good luck with whatever you're doing, though. From day 54 to day 57, having been rejected by Kling, I continued back to my base. Well, at least this day can't get any worse. You have a big storm coming, Zozo. I turned and saw that literally the last person I wanted to see right now was standing right behind me. Behemoth, a Mogulish's number one goon. Oh no, not you again. I believe we have some unfinished business. Square up and prepare to meet your doom. I shifted into my gold golem form and pulled out my mace. This time, I was going to win. I charged straight at him with impressive speed, and with all my might, I swung the mace right into his face. And it had no effect. I still wasn't anywhere near strong enough to fight Behemoth. And all I could do was run away while he laughed at me. Meanwhile, back at Amogalish's evil lair, he was receiving information from his top advisor, the impish Pixin. Tell me, Pixin, how goes the war effort? Are our forces winning? We've crushed resistance to the east. Our Wither Skeleton army has been successful in raiding the villages to the west. Soon, I'm sure, the north and south will fall too. And what of Zozo? Has Behemoth destroyed that little brat yet? Soon, my lord. Behemoth says that our mission will be even easier than he thought. Delightful. Just delightful. On day 58 to day 62, I returned to my base, feeling a little down in the dirt. So I turned myself into a swamp pig. I'm so ashamed of myself. It feels like I can't do anything right. But when I got back, I was so happy to see that the tribal gremlins had increased the size of my base. They built new rooms and a whole new floor. It's the least we could do since you let us stay here with you, Zozo. I was so touched by their kindness that I wanted to do something for them in return. I'd build a statue, but not just any statue, a tribute to the fallen tribal gremlin chief. I started collecting all the proper material when I happened upon an abandoned diamond mine out in the jungle. I wonder if there are still diamonds down there. I went in and started to mine until I finally found enough diamonds to craft a pair of diamond armor pieces, a pickaxe, helmet, pants, and some cool boots. It isn't much, but it'll certainly help. From day 63 to day 66, one of the tribal gremlins approached me. Zozo, I think I know where you might be able to find a mithril battle axe like the one you were looking for. There's a special cave out in the desert, one that's sacred to my people. We might be able to find it together. That sounds like an excellent idea, tribal gremlin. Let's do it. We set off together until we reached the desert. With my shape-shifting powers growing by the day, I decided to shift into a guster so I could fit into the desert environment. After two days of walking, we finally found the cave. It looked deep and dark, and as I stepped forward to enter, the tribal gremlin stopped me. Wait, Zozo, I just remembered something important. You can't go in the cave, not yet. But why not? We really need that mithril battle axe, tribal gremlin. But you need to obtain a soul heart first. I've heard of legends that those who enter the cave without one lose their souls, so we need to seek one out. Yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem like a pretty solid call. From day 67 to day 70, the tribal gremlin went home, and I continued exploring the desert, hoping to find a soul heart. It's a shame they don't just hand out those things, huh? Suddenly, I was distracted from my search as a coyote running towards me. He looked really worried. Hey, stranger, mind lending me a hand? There's a nasty Sudaramu bothering me and my coyote brothers. Sure thing. 
Maybe I can help defuse the situation. I ran after the coyote until I found a group of coyotes being attacked by a huge Sudoramu who was clawing at them. He looked like he was in a really bad mood. Sudoramu, stop bothering these coyotes. Mind your own business, fool. This is between me and the coyotes. The second you start bothering people, it is my business. Time to fight. I ran to the Sudoramu and began to fight. He was tough, but he didn't seem like he really wanted to destroy me. He just liked fighting people. So I gave him a good fight. Every time he swung his claws at me, I was able to dodge, then hit back. My hits barely bothered him, but he seemed like he enjoyed having the exercise. Yeah, that was a good fight. I like your style, man. You're a pretty good fighter yourself, Sudoramu. How about instead of fighting random coyotes, you go up against a real opponent? Like helping me take on that demon, a Mogulish. Now that sounds like a good time. From day 71 to day 74, after not finding anything in the desert other than a cave I couldn't enter, I returned to the base. Only to find that Behemoth was already there and he was annihilating my base. By the time I got back, half of the base had been destroyed and he was attacking the tribal gremlins trying to rest there. Suzo, you're back, good. I was getting bored destroying all your friends. Behemoth, you monster! You're going down for this! Try me. I transformed into a Vex, pulled out my mace again, and attacked Behemoth. My rage fueled me, and this time, as I attacked him, it looked like I was actually doing some damage. You've improved, Zozo, I'll give you that. But you're still nothing compared to me. Behemoth hit me back, stunning me and taking down several of my hearts. And while I was stunned, he grabbed one of the tribal gremlins and ran off with him. Gremlin, no! But there was nothing I could do. After I got my strength back, I teamed up with the other gremlins to rebuild the destroyed sections of my base and create a new guard tower to watch out for any future intruders. At a Mogulish's lair, he was laughing with glee as his army of monsters and skeletons prepared themselves for the next battle. It is almost time. Soon, I will wipe out the resistance and all will be mine. From day 75 to day 78, King Midas once again arrived at my base, carrying a gift. Zozo, I have heard about your recent losses and your valiant attempts to get your hands on the Mithril Battle Axe. In the meantime, please, as a token of my gratitude for all the work you've done, take this. Oh, wow, King Midas, thank you. What is this? It's a sword of undying. My old battle weapon from my adventuring days. It's not the Mithril Battle Axe, but this is a powerful, well-forged weapon. I believe Behemoth keeps his own private lair out in the plains. Perhaps you should go show him how well you can use this new weapon. From day 79 to day 84, I arrived at Behemoth's lair out on the plains with my Sword of Undying, ready to do battle. I stormed in, ran past the skeleton soldiers, and saw that Behemoth was waiting for me. This is it, Zozo! I've gotten bored of playing with my food. You won't be leaving this lair. And when I've destroyed you, the master will give me power and riches. Your creep of a master is never going to see you again, Behemoth. Skeletons, grab this fool. Skeletons surrounded me, but I managed to take them down without much effort. I focused on Behemoth next. Sword in hand, we fought. Behemoth was still incredibly strong, but I felt like I was finally ready to take him on. But as the fight went on, even though I was doing some good damage, Behemoth started to turn the tide. He fought harder and harder, hitting me again and again, watching my hearts drop. Even with the regeneration and extra absorption health the Sword of Undying gave me, I was still losing this fight. Everything I'd worked for was about to be for nothing. You've been amusing, Zozo, but I won't miss you when you're gone. Just as Behemoth was about to finish me off, one of the walls of his lair exploded and Sudoramu broke in to save the day. Zozo, eat this. He threw me a golden apple. I'd never seen one like it before, and I immediately took a bite. Immediately, everything changed. I could feel myself getting bigger and stronger, and not just regenerating hearts, but doubling them. With the 16 hearts, I shifted into ultimate gold golem. And with the Sudoramu at my side, I was ready to finish this. The two of us attacked the behemoth together, giving him no chance to take us out. I climbed to the top of the gate wall and jumped on the behemoth, swinging my sword at his head. 
He was defeated once and for all! I looked and saw that the destroyed behemoth had dropped a soul heart onto the ground. Wow. Now that was a good fight. Say, what's that thing he dropped? Sudoramu, that's our ticket to the big time! From day 85 to day 89, while still out in the plains, I shapeshifted into a double-headed vile ogre. I stumbled upon some clay and dug it up to use on the tribal gremlin chief statue. This is gonna look awesome, and I bet my tribal gremlin roommates will really appreciate it too. I returned to the base and completed the statue. Seeing it there inspired me and reminded me of what really mattered, all the innocent people I was fighting for. With the statue done, I set off for the desert with the behemoth soul heart in my inventory. I could finally enter the sacred cave and obtain the mithril battle axe. It would be a great day. But when I entered, things weren't so easy. There were husks everywhere. And just as I was about to clear them all, a terrifying Jabberwock jumped out of the cave and started attacking me. I needed to pull out King Midas' sword to fight him off. And even then, it wasn't easy. Feels like nothing has been easy for me these last few months. But with the Jabberwock cave guardian defeated, I saw it there, waiting for me. The mithril battle axe that would solve all of our problems. I picked it up and felt its power surging through my hands. Ignites and knocks back targets. Well, that is useful. Things are looking up at last. From day 90 to day 94, I emerged from the cave with the mithril battle axe, wondering what I'd use it for first, when I saw that a mogulish was standing right in front of me. Hello again, Zozo. Think I'd let you get away with destroying my most powerful henchmen? For that, I'm going to destroy you myself. I didn't feel like talking to this monster. Instead, with the mithril battle axe in hand, I charged at him, ready to strike. I got one hit in. He instantly hit me back and sent me flying. The hit was so hard, it knocked the battle axe right out of my hands. Before I could get up, he snatched the mithril battle axe, even though I'd only just gotten it. You won't be needing this anymore. In fact, I think I'll make much better use of it than you ever did. Goodbye, Zozo. There was an explosion, and the desert ground beneath me caved in, trapping me in a pit. A mogulish disappeared, off to do something awful, no doubt. One step forward, two steps back. From day 95 to day 97, I needed to do something clever to escape the pit. Thankfully, this was where my shape-shifting skills came in handy again. I turned into a bald eagle and flew right out of there, heading towards King Midas' village. With the mithril battle axe lost, I needed to ask him for advice on what I should do next. But it was already too late. When I arrived at the village, I saw it had been completely ransacked. All the buildings were destroyed. I couldn't see any villagers. All that was left was King Midas, near death, next to his broken throne. I flew down and turned into a golden villager, approaching King Midas to see if there was anything I could do to help. I'm sorry, it's already too late for me. Amalgalish used the Mithril Battle Axe to improve his power to unimaginable levels. He destroyed the entire village. You must stop him. You're our only hope. I will stop him, King Midas. I promise, he'll pay for everything he's done. King Midas passed, and I journeyed back to my base. On day 98, I arrived back at the base and found that my worst fears had been made real. A Mogulish had come here too and destroyed everything. The base was in tatters, and most of the tribal gremlins were gone. I'd failed. I couldn't protect anybody or anyone. It seemed like a Mogulish was going to use the Mithril Battle Axe to rule the world. I felt so terrible about myself, I shapeshifted into a cockroach. Just as I was about to give up hope, one of the last tribal gremlins approached me. I'm so sorry that I failed, tribal gremlin. I let your people down from beginning to end. But this isn't the end, Zozo. You can't give up. If a Mogulish could use the magical axe to destroy all this, then maybe if you get your hands on the axe, you can make it all okay again. And in that moment, I knew that the tribal gremlin was right. If that axe could get us into this, it might be the only thing that could get us out. On day 99, I shapeshifted into King Midas himself as a tribute to the great king's legacy. As him, I approached Amogalish's base, wielding his sword of undying. To my surprise, Amogalish himself came out to meet me, holding the mithril battle axe, exactly as I'd hoped. King Midas, this is impossible. I dealt you a lethal blow with the mithril battle axe. You must be 
Zozo, and I'll be taking that axe. Yes, to the face. This time, a Mogulish lunged at me first, upset at being tricked. But that's when I took my opportunity. As he swung the Mithril Battle Axe, I dodged and snatched it from his hands. Thanks, Amogulish. I promise I'll bring it back. With the Battle Axe in hand, I ran back to my base as fast as I could, hoping that it still had some magic left over after all the damage that Amogulish had done with it. I arrived back at my base and began to wish, holding the axe tightly in my hands. I wish for all the tribal gremlins to be brought back and for my base to be fully repaired. That's all I ask for. And seconds later, the axe vanished from my hands, never to be seen again. But my wish was granted. My base was back to normal, and all the tribal gremlins had been brought back. You saved us, Zozo. Thank you. And now, together, we can save everyone else. Like Amogulish himself said, just one tribal gremlin doesn't count for much. But all of you together, we can bring Amogulish down for good. Let's go save the world. On day 100, I led the Tribal Gremlin Strike Force straight into Amogulish's lair. As Wither Skeletons poured out to fight us, the Gremlins took them on. Gremlin freedom forever! And as the fight raged on, of course, Amogulish crawled out of his lair, ready to fight me personally. You worthless little creature. I should have destroyed you when you were small and weak. It would have saved me a lot of trouble. It's too late for regrets now, Amogulish. They won't do you any good. Stubborn and arrogant to the end. Do you really think you can beat me? You're not even carrying a weapon. I'm a shapeshifter, Amogulish. Don't you know what that means? What? It means I am the weapon. And with that, I turned into my final form, a giant ender dragon. No, this can't be. It isn't fair. I can't be defeated by some other lowly shapeshifter. I'm the most powerful being in the world. But all that complaining didn't do him any good. I unleashed my most powerful dragon's breath attack on him, and by the time I was done, there was nothing left. A Mogulish was defeated. And once the tribal gremlins were done defeating the last of the wither skeletons, the world could finally be at peace once again.